Ultra short bond funds. Know where you're parking your money. Before you invest in an ultra short bond fund or any mutual fund, you need to understand how mutual funds work, what factors to consider, and how you can avoid common problems. This video walks you through everything you should know, explaining key concepts, risks, and benefits in plain English. Keep in mind also that the United States Securities and Exchange Commission has two great resources investor.gov and the investor information section of the SEC website at www.sec.gov slash investor shtml where you can always get more information about investing wisely and avoiding fraud. Let's get started. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. I hope you are doing fantastic today. I'm doing marvelous, if you are to ask me. And uh, if you're doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or a mud cup. Let's roll. <laughs> today, I want to talk to you about ultra-short bond funds. Let's d define the, uh, the concept here. Ultra-short bond funds are mutual funds that generally invest in fixed income securities with extremely short maturities or time periods in which they become due for payments. I'm talking here about three months, six months, or one year. Like other bond mutual funds, ultra-short bond funds may invest in a wide range of securities, including corporate debts, government securities, mortgage-backed securities, and other asset-backed securities. Some investors don't realize that there are material differences between ultra-short bond funds and other investments with relatively low risks, such as money market accounts, money market funds rather, and certificate of deposits. When I use the word material in investment or accounting or finance, it means significant. So there are significant differences between ultra-short bond funds and other investments such as money market accounts, money market funds, and CDs. Specifically, ultra-short bond funds tend to have higher risk than money market funds and certificate of deposits. So money market funds can only invest in certain high-quality, short-term investments issued by the U.S. government, U.S. corporations, and state and local governments. So at the end of the day, you have to make a decision. If you go to a financial planner or go to a financial advisor and they start talking to you about ultra short bond funds, you have to ask yourself if the risk profile for such an investment is, is right for you. Because as I said, this is a, a high risk security and uh, may not be appropriate for certain investor profiles, may not be appropriate for certain individuals. By the way, folks, this show as well as all, all our shows around investment and finance do not represent advice. We have conducted research and we are just uh, sharing with you the results of our research. Everybody's situation is different, so you wanna contact a, an expert, a financial expert, to help you with your particular situation. So one thing I wanted to also say, say here is that ultra short bond funds, given the fact that they are high risk, may not be appropriate for folks who are nearing retirement, for example, or folks who have adopted who are risk averse. If you are risk averse, you want to stay away from ultra short bond fund. If you are a risk taker, if you are a calculated risk taker and you have read the paperwork around the mutual fund, around the, uh, the ultra short bond fund, then go ahead with it. One thing I also want to mention here is that ultra short bond funds, like other bond mutual funds, are not subject to these requirements and typically pursue strategies aimed at producing higher yields by investing in securities with higher risk. What are the, uh, the requirements I was talking about? The requirements were the ones that you have to invest only in certain high quality securities issued by the U.S. government or U.S. corporations. Okay, so in addition, the net asset value of an ultra short bond fund will fluctuate while a money market fund tries to keep its NAV, its uh, net asset value, at a stable $1 per share. Money market accounts are also subject to strict diversification and maturity standards that don't apply to ultra short bond funds. 
Ultra short bond funds are not guaranteed or insured by the FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or any other government agency. This is important to know because if something happens, you lose everything. You lose it all. You lose your money. As this is an, an ultra short bond fund, it's just your typical instrument, financial instrument. A CD, a certificate of deposit, on the other hand, features federal deposit insurance up to $250,000. This is why a lot of banks, if not all banks in the United States, will put at the bottom of uh, their products or at the bottom of their websites, they have to put if they are FDIC insured or if the product they're trying to sell to you is FDIC insured. So a certificate of deposits promises a return of principal and a, spe and a, spe a specified rate of interest and um, therefore becomes a special type of deposit account with a bank or thrift institution that typically offers a higher rate of interest than a regular savings account. The bottom line here is that you want to be clear about the difference between an ultra short bond fund, a money market fund, and a certificate of deposit. It's all about the fact that you have more risk is more risk taken by the ultra short bond fund manager versus the money market fund manager or the banker at, at, at the banker who works at the institution where you open the CD in the first place. Let's talk now about risk considerations. Obviously, you have noticed that uh, and I've said it before that an, an ultra short bond fund is uh, riskier than a money market fund. Let's talk about if you're considering investing in an ultra short bond fund, you want to keep in mind that ultra short bond fund can vary significantly in their risks and rewards. And that's just the, the basic premise of investing, right? The higher the risk, the higher the rewards. So the lower the risk, the lower the rewards. That's just the way it works. That, cor that correlation has, uh, has been in place for decades. In fact, some ultra short bond funds may lose money despite their investment objective of preserving capital. The level of risk associated with a particular ultra short bond fund may depend on a variety of factors, including the credit quality of the fund's investments. What do I mean by that? It is critical to know the types of securities a fund invests in because ultra short bond funds may experience losses due to credit downgrades or default of their portfolio securities. What I'm trying to say is, let's say an ultra short bond fund, for instance, has a diversified portfolio, but it has a concentration, has a 15% concentration on Indonesia, for example. In other words, they have bought the securities, the fixed income securities, the bonds issued by companies in Indonesia. And uh, let's say uh, Moody's or S&P Standards and Poor's have downgraded the country, Indonesia, which means that all the companies that all the Indonesian countries also have seen their credit worthiness downgraded. This will have an effect on the portfolio because 15% of, of our hypothetical portfolio comprises bonds issued by Indonesian um, companies. So you are having, you are going to have losses if you own such an ultra short bond fund. Credit risk is less of a factor for ultra short bond fund that typically invest in government securities. But again, we've seen it depends on the government. It depends on the solidity of the of the of the government's budgeting system. We've seen a few years ago, 10, 12 years ago, what happens in um, what happened in uh, Greece, in Europe, in some parts of Europe, in uh, Portugal, in Italy, where previously solid governments had to be bailed out. Think about it. Had to be bailed out by the International Monetary Fund, but with the with the they have to be bailed out by the European Central Bank. We've had the same thing uh, here in the uh, in the American continent, where we had Argentina a few years ago defaulting on its uh, debt, on its sovereign debt. The point I'm trying to get here is that the the notion that Credit, credit risk does not exist when you invest in government securities is not always true. One thing I also want to talk about is that if you invest in an ultra short bond fund that invests in bonds of companies with lower credit ratings, 
Derivative securities or private label mortgage-backed securities, the MBS, you will generally be subject to a higher level of risk. And we've seen that play out in the 2008 crisis. The MBS were part of the catalog of uh, instruments that led to the crisis in the first place, the mortgage-backed securities. I will be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. I hope you are doing fantastic. We are having a conversation today around ultra short bond funds. And uh, I was just telling, telling you that you have to know where you're parking your money. And uh, if you love the content's clarity and quality so far, please consider subscribing to our channel and uh, turn on the notification bell so you can be notified in real time whenever we release a new show. And we do this every single day, rain or shine. So I was talking to you about the risk considerations before buying an ultra short bond fund, I was talking to you about three types of risk considerations you have to pay attention to. The first one is the credit quality of the fund's investments. Now let's talk about the second consideration, the maturity dates of the fund's investment. So the maturity date of a security is the date that it becomes due for payment. So if if you get a, a 10 year, uh, if you bought a, an ultra short bond fund with the maturity date of uh, two years from now, then the maturity is two years. An ultra short bond fund that holds the securities with longer average maturity dates will be riskier than a fund with shorter average maturity dates, assuming the funds are otherwise similar. And that makes sense because the longer you hold the security, the, the, the higher the risk that something adverse to the company's operations might happen. The third risk consideration you need to pay attention to is the sensitivity to interest rate changes. Generally, for those of you who are, for those who are not familiar with the bond market and how bond investment works, when interest rates go up, the value of debt securities will go down. Let me repeat that. So whenever interest rates go up, the value of debt securities will go down. And the reason is, this is very simple. Think about it. You, if you bought a a bond valued at a thousand dollars, and the bond the company is paying you is paying bondholders five percent, and two years from now, the average interest rate is at seven percent or eight percent. The bond that pays value that, that pays interest at five percent is not attractive to investors anymore. Investors would rather go to the bond that pays eight percent. And what that happens here is that the value of the bond paying five percent interest every year will go down. That value will, will go down. So because of this, you can lose money investing in any bond fund, including an ultra short bond fund. In a high interest rate environment, certain ultra short bond funds may be especially vulnerable to losses. So because it depends on their uh, diversification model, depends on uh, their exposure. So before you invest in any ultra short bond fund, be sure to read about the fund's duration, which measures how sensitive the fund's portfolio may be to charges, to changes rather, in interest rates. So what's the bottom line here, folks? As always, one thing I want to say is you want to be skeptical of any investments that promises you a greater potential for return at no additional risk. Investors can learn more about an ultra short bond fund by reading all the funds available information, including the prospectus. And if you have doubts or you have questions, don't hesitate to contact the the um, the bond fund manager or the office that handles their uh, investor relations and you, and you ask questions the more questions you ask the better it is your money after all and you don't want to lose the money because of um, because of ignorance all right so today I, I talked to you about I defined what an ultra short bond fund is and I gave you the risk consideration you have to think about before buying such a bond such a fund so the credit quality of the fund's investments, the maturity dates of the fund's investments, and the sensitivity to interest rate ch changes. I will see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.